going on guys snake eyes here bringing you some more bloodborne news and this is going to be part one of a two-parter to uh, bloodborne news but in this video i'd like to go over character attributes and the weapons menu uh, plus a few things here and there that was shown in the 18 minutes of gameplay that was just released today is february the 2nd 2015 and the reason i say that is because i want that to be the verbal reminder to people when I talk about this because I realize that I run the risk of being a little off or just flat out wrong when I go over some of these things and if I don't know let's say a week or two down the line IGN or From talks about this with a little bit more detail there's no way of me knowing that as it stands right now so for those watching a week a month or hell even after the game is out keep in mind that for me it's February the 2nd and all the info that we're gonna have then is not all the info that I have now so I'm gonna try my best with what's known so far but getting right into it every weapon shown in this preview has very minimal info since this is a demo build I imagine that the full release version will include things like scaling uh, possibly status effects uh, so on and so forth I'll come back to those later, but if we look to the right, we get to see some character attributes and I'll go down the list and talk about each one with some detail. Up first we have level, which is basically self-explanatory. Uh, this shows you the level of your character. Up next we have blood echoes, which is going to function as the currency of Bloodborne and is used for trading with the messengers in the Dream Refuge and possibly other locations as well. Uh, blood echoes could serve other purposes but this is all that I know of so far insight is ironically one of the few things that I really can't tell you anything about because I really don't know uh, and since I don't know I'm pretty much just gonna skip this one vitality is the primary stat for upgrading health endurance is the primary stat for upgrading stamina and possibly the equip loads Strength is the stat needed for certain weapons and items, and skill is basically the dex equivalent, which is going to be used for the same purposes. Blood Tinge may function as a primary stat for guns and could have something to do with bleed scaling. Um, Blood Tinge could serve other purposes, but uh, like I said, this is all that I know of so far. Arcane is just like Insight in the fact that I really don't know exactly what this could do. Uh, one theory that I have is that Arcane could have something to do with gadgets, um, but I honestly couldn't tell you, so take that one with a grain of salt. But going back to the weapons menu screen, we get to see some pretty standard stuff, and just like the character attributes, I'll go over them and try my hand at explaining what each individual tab means. This section shows each weapon's attack stats with the scaling right next to them, and it looks like there's going to be four alternate attack types as well. Blood attack, which looks like it's going to show up a lot more in the guns rather than the weapons. Uh, that's not to say that weapons won't have blood attack, but as of now, it looks like guns will receive the best benefit from blood attack. And if it's laid out the way that I think it is, when you upgrade blood tinge, you'll be able to use more powerful guns, which will have a higher blood attack rating. And depending on the scaling of that weapon, it's possible that you'll receive even more blood attack power on top of that. So it definitely looks like Blood Tinge is the route that you want to go if you're looking to do some sort of gun build. But keep in mind that it also looks like you'll need some pretty high strength and skill as well. But all of that has really yet to be seen. Arcane Attack. It could be the Sorcery or Hex equivalent, but I honestly don't know. Uh, one thing to note is the symbol that you see right next to Arcane Attack is different than the one you see in the Character Attribute menu. Whether or not that actually means anything, I don't know, but just like its character attribute counterpart, I honestly couldn't tell you specifically what this does. Fire and Bolt Attack are pretty self-explanatory, and it's possible that any one of these three attributes can affect how potent those attacks are, but other than that, there really isn't much more to go off of, so I'll just leave it at that. Quicksilver Bullet Use is a gun exclusive and again is pretty self-explanatory. It tells you how many bullets guns use which is very interesting because that means that there are guns out there that use more than one bullet at a time. Keeping my dreams alive that the Gatling gun is a usable weapon in the game. Um, a lot of people have abandoned that idea but I remain hopeful and even if it isn't it's still pretty sweet to know that there's other guns out there that could be just as interesting. 
durability. Um, the right side shows the weapon's max durability and the left side shows how much durability the weapon has left. Um, and I think that they're going to go back to giving weapons high durability and leaving it up to the player to maintain it using blacksmiths or whatever the equivalent might be. And I think that's a good move because I know how much people really didn't like how Dark Souls 2 did it. Uh, so going back to this method is okay with me. Special attack. To be honest, I couldn't really come up with an educated guess for this one, so if you guys want to talk about what you think these four special attacks are, leave a comment because I honestly couldn't tell you. Attributes bonus is basically scaling. Uh, the higher the grade, the bigger the bonus, and that goes off of the attribute requirements, which are the minimum requirements to use whatever weapon you're looking at. Uh, in this case, the player needs at least 7 strength, 9 skill, and 5 blood tinge. But that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. Uh, part 2 is basically going to talk about the other menus and some of the little things that I caught uh, when I was looking at the 18 minutes of gameplay. Uh, for those who don't know, IGN did release 18 minutes of unedited gameplay. Um, well, I really, really shouldn't say unedited because what they ended up doing was taking out the character creation. Um, I guess they don't want people seeing that just yet. Uh, I did have it on my channel, it got taken down and I did get a copyright strike which fucking sucks to be honest. Um, I took it down because like I said it basically puts my channel at risk. Uh, I'll go ahead and link it if you guys want to check it out. And for those wondering why I'm not using that video as my background, uh, it's mainly because I'm nervous about doing that now. I can only get one strike before they terminate my channel and that's something that I really don't want to happen. To be completely honest, I'm extremely nervous about using screenshots because I just don't want to risk it. Uh, but I am and hopefully all goes well. It sucks and I am a little bit frustrated but at the same time, I'll be completely honest, I should have known better. Uh, I didn't and uh, like I said, that's pretty much all my fault. I really don't blame anybody but myself. But like I said, this was part one. Part two is going to be coming out within a day or two. And hopefully even more news will be out uh, at that time as well. So that way I can kind of keep this thing going. But for the most part, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. So leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. One thing that I will say is that if you guys haven't checked out those 18 minutes of gameplay, uh, check them out. It's fucking awesome. It's really epic. I definitely recommend it. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, take care.